we got some things to chat about, boys. If y'all know anything about me, it's probably that I like Next.js and TypeScript. I do. I wish they liked each other a little more. Thankfully, they're starting to. It's really cool to see the amount of work Vercel's been putting in to better working with and understanding TypeScript over the last few years. Today, they announced a really cool change that I am super hyped about. They are building a TypeScript plugin. What does that mean? Well, I could tell you. Or we could watch the video where they announce it. So I'm going to choose that. Let's do a reaction because we don't do a lot of these and they're easy content. And I'm actually really hyped on this video. So let's watch it. Hope from the Next.js team has worked on a TypeScript plugin for Next.js. Check this out. So the first time that you run Next Dev in your Next.js project, you're going to receive a prompt to enable the plugin. Now, if you click Allow, this will set things up for you. Great. The plugin, as we can see here, has already spotted our first error. If I hover over the revalidate value, we can see that it should be a number and not a string. We can also start to see another feature of the plugin in context documentation or without having to leave your editor. Now let's add another option, const dynamic. So something I want to call out here because it's a huge change. One of the problems in TypeScript is that it exists within like JavaScript's ecosystem and capabilities. What goes on here that wasn't possible before is like these keys, these random variables like dynamic params, revalidate, these values are just random strings and random keys that don't have a type because those are, as far as TypeScript knows, just random variables that exist. As such, we can't really type them in traditional senses. There has been some work and discussion around a file API where at like a file name level, you could enforce or enforce expectations on what specific files export and what values they have in them. But that's maybe going to happen in the future. If the next team's decided they don't want to wait. They're going to build a plugin that sees these keys being exported from something in this directory and it throws a type error and overrides the built-in type system to say, hey, if there is something export at the top level and it's named revalidate, the type of that is in a number. It is. Make sure it's a number. And they can write crazy definitions in there and give you like hints, give you links to docs, give you the docs themselves. But the reason they can do that is they stopped waiting for the TypeScript ecosystem to give us the things we need to build those type defs and instead said, screw it, we're going to extend TypeScript itself. And you will see here that we get all the available options with a brief overview of what these options do. And I can quickly select the value I want to use by using my keyboard. Now, if I hover over an option, it will give you more information about that option. So here's a quick tip. If you're exporting multiple options, you actually may find it nicer to group them using a comma. What happens if I try to import use state into a server component? You will see here that we get an early warning reminding us that server components don't support state hooks. Now let's change the server component into a client component using the syntax use client. And you will see here that use state is now a valid option. If I move use client below my imports, you can see here that the plugin will help me catch the mistake. So with server components, you can't use things like traditional state hooks and something like use client being a random string you put at the top of a file isn't going to tell TypeScript, hey, you can or can't use these things. But the idea of using a TypeScript plugin to change the definition within the file and the expected type definitions of things in it at that TypeScript level is super valuable because it's not editor specific, it's in TypeScript. And you can validate that through CI as well. I would argue this is a must use thing when you start using the app directory. It makes life so much better when you're using these patterns. I also saw a question that somebody asked like, can't you do this with JS doc? No, you can't. JS doc doesn't have a plugin system. The string use client being at the top of the file means nothing to JS doc. A random export named dynamic params means nothing to JS doc. JS doc, when you're importing things, can put type definitions and things on it. But the very existence of a thing with a name in a file that isn't imported or maybe isn't even exported, that isn't something you can do via standards right now. Those are not implemented in any of the APIs for any of these systems. You have to build your own plugin architecture to do this. This is one of those like heavier lifts that not many companies or teams are able to make because the TypeScript plugin architecture is 
it's rough. It's hard to do. But they were willing to put the effort in. Shooting worked super hard on this. And the result is best-in-class developer experience that can't really be done in other places without a lot of additional effort being put in. Even though we are using use client, it doesn't actually take effect because it's not defined at the top of the file. If we move the directive back up to the top, bam, no more errors. I love this plugin. Sure, great job. And this is just the beginning. In the coming weeks, we plan on adding more features, such as auto-completing props and types for layouts and pages, and also warning you when you pass a non-serializable prop from a server component to a client component. Stay tuned. Good stuff. I'm pretty hyped. It's a big launch. Should be included in next projects in the future. Suggestions and auto-complete. Here's a cool example with the docs in it. When you type in revalidate, it has the docs on what different behaviors do and how they work. It's so good. This is like life-changing. <laughs> I am so hyped. I am so hyped. This is this is one of those things where like once you have it and you see it, you're like, oh yeah, probably should have had this forever. And then you start using it and you're like, oh shit. Yeah, that's obvious. This is like the SSD moment where you move from a hard drive to an SSD and it's like obviously better. And then you go back and it's like so painful to do it. Yeah. Revalidate on a set date. Uh, that's tough because that like you can't do that in code because this is like hard coded values and a date something that you're likely going to change. Regardless, super hype, really pumped this is finally happening. I, I, this is one of the biggest overdue pieces that really makes my old blog post irrelevant that I've waited for forever. We're finally here. I hope this one was helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed after watching this pile of videos, that's on you, not me. Only half of y'all are subscribed for some reason. It's free, button's right there. It's also a like button, probably over there-ish. You should hit that and you should check out the new video being recommended there. Thank you for the time. Hope you enjoyed this one. Go make some type safe code. Peace nerds.